hypothesis testing in this chapter? The answer is you got to create that chart. I mean, if we're doing if you're doing this in Excel, you just throw it into Excel. But if you're doing it by hand, we got to do it by hand. So we're going to have to create a bunch of columns. Remember the x squared column, the x the xy column, the x squared column, the y squared column, etc. We have to create those columns if we're going to figure out the b1 and the b0 on the test by hand. Again, you can do it on home uh, on a computer, but for the test for the in-class test, we do it by hand. The problem is, what is the x? And that turns out to be a problem for some, maybe the people who aren't here today are going to get it wrong in the test, because a lot of people mess this up, even though I'm telling you explicitly what it is. What is, what is the x? It's a, one of the challenges of this whole problem. What is the x, Adam? X is time. OK, so let's substitute, instead of an x, let's substitute a t. So instead of calling it xy, we'll call it ty and t squared, but it's the same as the x. But what is t? What number do you plug in? You've got to plug in numbers. What, what number are you going to plug in? Yes. That's exactly right. So here's the mistake that a lot of people, people think one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The answer is that's wrong. We're basically saying as time progresses from here to here to here to here to here, as the time gets bigger and bigger, the trend of that particular company's sales is going up, 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 or down, 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 whatever it is. So we have to include another, so the X is not given to you. When you see this chart on the test, or maybe the, 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 you know online, the X is not given to you. You have to realize you have to create another column and a little, we can stick it in here. The T column really should be placed in front of the Y. Let's make it in front, I'm sorry, let's make it right in front of the Y. The T column, the T column, the T column is going to be, for every example starting with one, two, three, four, but then you continue, five, six, seven, eight. So for example, the homeworks I'll be giving you today to practice for Monday will have, some examples might have four years worth of data. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to 16. Other examples have seven years worth of data. So you go from one to 28, which is why it's easy to do this on Excel. But that's what you gotta do. So in this case, we only go to one to eight. And now we gotta start grinding out the, the, the multiplications and the sums to figure out the B1 and the B0. So well, let's do that. One time, and you're gonna have to help me uh, cooperate, of course, if you don't, Give me numbers, I'll just read off the numbers from you. You're not, you're not going to be able to practice this. So please practice it in class. How much is t times y? Remember the, the I'm sorry, the, the formula for the b1, let's, let's, let's go back here. The formula for the b1, we know from chapter 13, is n summation xy minus summation x summation y divided by n summation x squared minus summation x parentheses squared. Except now, you could use the old formula if you like. I have no, no problem with that, but the, since now, all the x's become t's, the formula I'm going to be showing you is n summation ty minus summation t summation y over n summation t squared minus summation t squared. But it's exactly the same formula, just changing the t to an x. It's like to be the old x. So well, how much is x times y are now? 1 times 10.2 is 10.2. 2 times 12.4 is 24.8. 3 times 14.8, I don't know. 4 times 15 is 60. 5 times 11.2 is 55, 56 probably. And I'll let you guys do all the other stuff. But at the end, you need the summation of the, the summation of the x's, which is now summation of the t. The summation of the y's, you're going to have to give me in a couple of minutes. The summation of the ty. And eventually, the summation of the t squared. Now, what's t squared? Well, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 9, 16, 25, 36, 49 and 64, and you can get the summation. But once you get those four summations, the only, the next challenge that people mess up on the test is, what's the n going to be in this particular example? N is eight. Make sure you realize, everyone was thinking, well, where did it come from? Well, the answer is eight. Make sure you know that. And now you plug it into the formula, which if we, not, you know, at the same time, we're not gonna do it right now in class. That'll be part of the homework. Um, you plug it all down, this number comes out. Anybody have any sums yet? How much is one plus two plus three? How much is the sum of the t's? Let's do that. 1 plus 2 is 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36. So, this, so you'll be plugging in a 36 over here. You'll be plugging in a 36 squared over here. You'll be plugging in 8 over here and 8 over here. And I'll let you do all the other stuff. But after all is said and done, the B1 comes out to point 
94.4. Now, here's another thing I got to tell you about this chapter that's different than all the other chapters. In all the other chapters, I was happy to let you round it to two places. In this chapter, you have to round everything to no less than three places because the calculations are very, very subtle. If you, if you round it too much, you'll get everything look, look, won't, you won't get the right answer. So 944. Then you got to figure out the B0, which is equal to Y bar minus B1 times X bar, or now in this new notation, Y bar minus B1 times T bar. Now, what is the Y bar? Well, you add up all the Ys, divide by 8. The B1 is 0.944. The, X, the T bar is, is 36 divided by 8. And all this, you know, this is pretty standard for everybody who's been doing Chapter 13. And it comes out to 10.040. So now we have the two numbers. And we have four minutes to finish this up. So let's keep, let's keep plugging away. Remember, on one of our, our main goals is to figure out the t for each individual data point and then to divide it into the y. So the next step is to calculate the t. Now, what's the, what was the old symbol for this capital T? Remember, there's little t representing the time and capital T representing the trend. What was the symbol for the capital T in the last chapter? Time's up. The answer is the y hat. We're trying to make a forecast for the y hat. Okay, so what is the, how do you figure out the y hat when, when x equals 1? Well, let's put it all together. The, the formula for the, y, the, for the y hat is B0 plus B1x is now going to be B0 plus B1 times T. So in our particular example, the trend is going to be 10.040 plus 0.944 times T. So let's make a forecast for the very first data point. If you plug in a, T, a 1 into this equation, what do you get? Well, 944 times 1 plus 10 comes out to 10.9. 84, if I'm correct, 10.984. Did anybody confirm that? Okay. Then you plug in a 2 into the equation because you want to figure out what is the trend, what is the straight trend line for t equals 2. Anybody have it? What if you plug in a 2, what do you get? If you plug in a 2, what do you get? 11.9. 28. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Now let's jump ahead because we're going to need that really for the. Let's jump ahead for the fifth data point or the first because we really want to look at all the look at the first quarter. What was it? If you plug in a five into this equation, what do you get? What do you get? Four, I'm sorry, fourteen. Point seven. Zero. Can remember everything got to be taken out to three places. Zero or what? Okay. Okay, now, for homework, you're going to fill out the other numbers, but really, we just need right now the first one and the first one. You'll see that in a second. So now let's move on to what's, can somebody tell me quickly what's going to be the very next step. Well, again, since I'll, I'll, I'm sorry to, make, to put you on the spot like this, but we now want to figure out the y divided by the t. So basically, you take the original y and now the t that we calculated and divide one by the other, you know, for eight times. So now you're going to do the y divided by t. Now, what does y divided by t leave you with? The S and the I. So now what we're calculating at this point is the S and the I factors. By the way, this is called a multiplicative model because we're multiplying the separate factors. Multiplicative model. Okay, so how much is how much is ten point how much is ten point two divided by ten point nine eighty four? Point nine two eight. How much is eleven point two divided by fourteen eleven let's do eleven point two divided by 14.760. How much is it? 0.758. All right, folks, I need, okay, now we're, now we're really finished. I need two minutes of overtime. Okay, so now you have, so we, now we know that the amount that the, so this, here's how you interpret this. Okay, now we're, now we're, we're two steps away from finishing up the whole thing. If you want to make a forecast for the first quarter of the next year, which is what, which is what, which is what we're trying to do here. Now, what is the first quarter of the next year? The ninth, the ninth data point. We already have eight data points. If you want to make a forecast for the next one, is the ninth data point. Um, basically, what we're going to do is the following. We're going to plug in a nine into this formula because now we're trying to see where the trend is going to be by the ninth data point. And then we're going to adjust it according to how much of an impact the season has on this particular data. Now, here's what we have. Now, imagine if we had this for five years, not just two years. This year is saying what? That this particular year, this particular quarter, the data is down by about 7 or 8 percent. Otherwise, it should be 100 percent. means it's exactly the same as a straight line. It's down by about 7, 8 percent. Here, the first quarter of the year is down by 25 percent. 
So that, those two numbers represent how much of an impact the first quarter of the year being in the first quarter of the year has on the data historically. But that's polluted by the fact that it's mixed up with the eye. So the eye has sometimes a positive impact on the data because it's random. Sometimes 